put, 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 put. I know I'm terrible at car sounds, but put, 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 put. You know, this guy can't be too powerful. It's definitely a put, put car. Well, this is a uh, red line. This is a jackrabbit. I wanted to restore one of these for a while. And uh, this week has been a rough week for me. I've, isn't that cool? Look at that. One of the things I like about red lines, look at that suspension. Normal, normal does not have it. A modern Hot uh, Wheels, but these are all bouncy. Now back to what I was saying. I've had a rough day at work this week. Haven't been able to get done you know, nearly what I wanted to with the uh, videos and the restorations. So I'm going to try and do a, uh, a quick and easy red line restoration. Every time I say that, I jinx myself, but hopefully it'll be a quick and easy one. So this guy has one post. So let's go ahead and start taking them apart. This is one of the flat rivets here, so it should be easier to get out. Okay, it's got a very dirty interior, extremely filthy interior, plastic suspension, but still in really good shape. Sometimes you'll find these broken, but this one's in great shape. You know, the axles are pretty rusted, but there's not much we can do about that. This uses caps, so that'll be easy to replace. That's good. Got a metal engine. It's in good shape considering. The glass and the interior are snapped together, which is an, an interesting thing. The glass is extremely dirty, but in beautiful shape. Interior, you know, we won't know how it looks until we get cleaned up, because it is so filthy. And then we've got the body. We've got a, a rear, I don't know what is it called when there's a rear engine. It's not a trunk, but it's the... The hood for the engine, the cover, engine cover, I'm not sure. But uh, we got that. It's in good shape. I'm not going to take that off. No reason to. And extremely dirty. But I'm not seeing any major problems yet. We'll know when we get the uh, paint off. So I'm going to dip this in the stripper tank, and then we'll see how it looks from there. Okay, while that's stripping, I'm going to get these wheels off. They're not in terrible shape, but I can replace them pretty easily and cheaply. So I'm going to. So I'm just going to pop these off. I got to decide what I'm going to do with this base. The uh, normally I would stick it in some lime out to get this corrosion off. But I'm not sure if that's the best choice here. I'm concerned because of this plastic right here. I don't think the lime out would hurt it, but really the only other option is to take this stuff off manually, and that's crazy hard to do, because that's really hard. I mean, this is like really hard stuff. That's why it's hard. Look at the crud, it's like got hair and stuff wrapped up in the wheels. It's gonna take a while to clean that out. So that's pretty gross. You probably don't want to see that. So I'm going to clean this up and then I'll tell you what I decided to do with the base. Well, laziness has beaten out caution and I am going to give it a try. So, you know, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. I just don't have time to clean this manually. Like I said, I'm kind of on a time crunch here. So I'm going to leave that in there for about four minutes and hope that it doesn't eat away at anything important. Well, that gamble paid off big time. No damage that I can tell to the plastic. And after a little bit of polishing, it looks super great, super shiny. You can blind you there. So we'll move off from that and move on to something else. Here we are all stripped of paint. And uh, it looks like this is zinc plated. I mean, I'm not really an expert about this. If someone could tell me, let me know. I didn't think that they zinc plated them if they had an enamel paint on them. But maybe all of these were zinc plated because this definitely looks zinc plated. Look how shiny that is. 
And for being as old as it is, and as rough as it was, it's in really good condition. There's really not much of anything I need to do to this. Um, especially since I'm going to prime it. So I think my next step is going to be to just simply prime it. And then we'll uh, get some paint on this guy. So I'll prime him and then I'll show you what it looks like all primed up. How's that? By the way, just a quick explanation of why I don't show my painting. Um, my paint booth, the lighting is just terrible and I have not been happy at all with the footage that I've gotten from there. I've ordered some things and supplies to make my paint booth you know, filmable, but it's going to be two or three weeks before that all gets set up. So that's why I haven't been filming my painting. So there you go. Okay, so I've got this all primed and it looks pretty good. I am using this uh, Steinorex, Steinorez, yeah, Steinorez uh, primer. I've had several people recommend it to me um, and it worked uh, really well once I learned how to use it. Um, for me, the best use of it is like straight out of the bottle. I've tried thinning it and had some problems with that. So straight out of the bottle at about uh, 20 PSI is what works for me. And uh, it gives it a really, a really nice level look. I was being concerned. I've been having some trouble with orange peel on my cars. And uh, I was afraid it was the primer, but it is definitely not the primer this time. So I'm, I'm doing some practicing to figure out what's going on. Now this guy is going to be white with a, see if we can see this without the, the glare of my lights, a um, blue, light blue stripe down the center is what it looks like in my pictures. I haven't seen a mint one of these in real life. So I'm going to paint the whole car a light blue, mask that off, and then do the white. But um, I thought I'd show you how I mix the paint. I'm going to use some Createx blue and some Createx white. And to do this, I'm going to put a little bit of white. You don't need much. I'll start out with just a drop of the blue maybe two drops, because we can add more, but it's a lot more difficult to take it away. It's using a pipette. Now I can tell already this is gonna be too light, but we're actually pretty close. That's why you wanna be careful, especially when you're making the light colors. Don't add too much pigment, but we need more here for sure. I think that's where I'm going to stop. You know, the camera isn't going to show the color exactly like it is. It's hard to focus too on it. It wants to focus on the edge of my cup. But uh, I think that's going to do it. I'm going to add the thinner and all that stuff, paint it up, and I'll show you what it looks like when we're done. So the blue turned out really good. The paint job looks excellent. I'm not seeing any. I'm not seeing any orange peel at all. It happens to be the same color as my gloves. I didn't intend that. But it is the color that I wanted. So I'm pleased with that. So I'm going to cut the mask. And how I cut my masks is I put some masking tape onto my metal ruler. And then I'm going to measure. I'm going to measure exactly. How I want my mask to be. It's going to be 6.36 millimeters. Mark it here. Then, using whatever straight edge I can find, I cut it. And that's how I get my masks, or at least my stripes for my masks. Works well for me. I know there's like a billion ways to do this, but that's how I do it. So I'm going to put the mask on this guy. I'm going to do it off camera because I need to be like super precise. And, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to do when I'm looking through a viewfinder and there's all sorts of equipment in my face. 
So I'll be back with the mask on it. So there's the mask, easy peasy. I'm wearing gloves because I don't want to get any oil on this because it's going to be painted over. That's the reason. Oil for my skin. Yeah, you think, oh, it's not much. It actually makes a huge difference sometimes. The difference between a paint failure and an awesome paint job. But uh, anyway, I'm going to put the white on and then we're going to see how she looks. Should be almost done. I'm excited. Okay, while we're waiting on the paint to dry, might as well work on this glass, which really hardly needs any work at all. I don't know if you can see. It's an excellent shape. One tiny crack at the top, but you know, barely even noticeable. Anyway, I think one of the problems I've been having with Pledge, and I've mentioned in the past I've had problems with my with getting Pledge on these uh, glass, well, I think I've found out that it's because I haven't been degreasing my my glass. I think there was getting I was getting some oil on it or something from my skin or, or just dirt or whatever. And what was happening is uh, the pledge wasn't sticking to those areas. So let me carefully get all the excess off. This is a very large piece of glass here. So it's going to be very noticeable anything that's on it. Should do it. So I'm just going to leave that to dry. And we might as well get some wheels on this base. So I'm going to use reproduction caps. These are very inexpensive. So let's see what size I need. Do I need the big ones? Or are these the mediums? Yep, they're mediums. So all they do is pop on. Crazy easy. All right. Looks awesome. Okay, this this engine is in really good shape. Really good shape. The only problem are the exhaust pipes. A little bit of issue. So I'm just going to chrome them up just a little bit. It's very tempting to do extra stuff like highlight the engine, maybe put a wash over it, add some color. Add some black to the insides of these. This is a restoration, so we're going to keep it as original as possible. So really all we're doing is waiting for the paint to dry, to put that mask on, one last layer of paint, and then a clear coat, and we'll be done with this restoration. It's going very smoothly, which is generally the kiss of death for me. Well, that turned out pretty well. It's probably not perfect, but I'm pleased with it. About as good as I can get with the clear coat right now. I'm still working. I'm still using a, a spray can for my clear coat. I haven't started using an airbrush yet because I just haven't found any for the airbrush that I liked. So if you know of one that you can recommend, I am all ears. Now let's go ahead and put this guy together and let's hope I do not mess anything up while I put them back together. Still love that suspension. Okay, if you remember, this is what it looked like before. And now the after. And it is looking beautiful. Gorgeous. I still don't know what they make. I mean, it looks like it's like a little go-kart almost. I need to like take some, some practice on uh, engine sounds because I'm not good at it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this easy little restoration. I, I got it done in time and uh, I've been doing two videos a week on one on Monday and one on Friday and I plan on keeping that up but if I can't I might miss one or two you know every once in a while if life gets in the way. This isn't you know my main job or anything like that it's just something I do for fun. But uh, I did. I made it this week. So uh, I hope to see you in my next video. I'm not sure what it's going to be, but I'm sure it will be awesome. And uh, no matter what, I hope you have a great day. I'll see you next time.